Sekiro may be my favorite game made by Miyazaki. It feels so distinct from the rest of games From Software has developed and has such a unique feeling to it. Its combat is probably the best one, in my opinion. And the setting, oh the setting, Mwah, it's... And, oh, I gotta tell you, it was perfect. So, in Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, speedrunners and pro players must be able to pull insane things. Like, I don't know, swimming in the air like it's nothing, right? And you want to learn how to do it, right? Then grab some snacks, some water, and buckle up, because this is Speedrunner Technique for Sekiro Shadows Die Toy. The first thing you need to know about this game is that when time matters, stealth becomes sort of an optional mechanic. The village is occupied by the enemy. No problem, just jump like a madman until you reach Kuro. Run back across it and let Genichiro stomp you. Don't worry, we'll get payback for this eventually. Get out of the dilapidated temple and follow the normal route until you reach this point, where a leap of faith will save you quite some time. Once you reach the chain ogre, it is time for the first official skip of the run. That's actually really, 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 really difficult and it does not save that much time, so attempting it is not recommended unless you're an elite speedrunner. But hey, anyways, here it's how it's done. Go upwards the stairs and run right from the chain ogre. Then stomp onto the right wall, go right, jump at the last possible second, this is called performing a delayed jump, wall jump forward and spam grab until you barely reach the ledge. You can fail this two or three times before the ogre releases from its chains and catches you. And he will be coming for you. The other option is to use one of the sugars you picked up earlier to increase your stealth and approach the ogre from the side so you can remove one health bar immediately. Then just proceed to fight him regularly. As you can see, I actually don't know how to do this skip, so here's an elite player doing it. The next double skip avoids having to play cat and mouse with the white serpent god, and now I'll tell you how to do it, but keep in mind, this is also really really complicated. After taking the idol, run through the canyon, evade the white giant snake, until you get to the ledge. Run facing forward and double jump using the ice in the middle as reference. If done correctly, you should be able to skip the whole gap and save around 10 seconds. That's the canyon skip. The double canyon skip is harder, riskier, but it also saves more time. At the beginning, drop to the left platform, set yourself into the left corner and jump twice to barely reach the platform across it. You have to time really well your jumps, as there is an invisible wall that you must go under. Then just perform the previous canyon skip mentioned and the trick is complete. Once again, the skips are often performed by advanced speedrunners, so practice them at your own volitions. And watch out for the white snake! It is time to fight the first proper boss, and his name is... Kyobu Masataka Oniwa! And, uh, actually, I lied. We are not fighting him. Keep the Gyobu fight entirely, run forward to gather the ash, and then run left surrounding Gyobu and going across the fire, until you get to this wooden watchtower. Once there, climb it from the left and use a delayed jump to grab the ledge of the roof and escape the arena. If you miss it and Gyo comes after you, just block his charge and run left so you get another try at the skip. However, if you did this correctly, Gyo should be running around in circles in the campfire and not actually charging. So you might be wondering now, I said the words delayed jump twice, but you don't know what they mean. Here's a quick recap. A delayed jump is a jump in Sekiro performed from a ledge at the last possible second, letting Wolf jump further than normal. It is a jump with a 1 frame window, so if you're playing on PC, that means 1 60th of a second. Good luck practicing it, because you'll need to use this a lot. To avoid bullfighting like you are in the San Fermines, position yourself in the roof of the right building by the entrance to the bullfight. Look towards the branches that obstruct the next set of roofs and time a precise double jump using the branch in the corner as your reference. Once you have performed the first jump, use the second one to move to the right and land safely on the roof. 
After that, it's just a matter of following the path without falling to skip the arena and the fight completely. Next thing in our list is to defeat some mini bosses, and we will use a special technique for that. Presenting you, Dead Angle! Approaching the Lone Shadow, equip Echo Sugar and execute him while falling from above. Then run straight to the corner and use Echo Sugar. Wait for the Shadow to close the distance with you and then double jump to trap him in the corner. Then just keep attacking without facing him directly until the Lone Shadow is defeated. As you are technically facing away the enemy, they will not try to deflect your attacks, which is really really useful. That's the dead end angle. After defeating him, enter the abandoned dungeon and, when you are traversing a stone bridge, pay attention to this tiny rock formation with some candles and jump into the abyss from there. Then just spam your grapple hook until Wolf lands safely on the entrance to Snake Eyes. Entering the swamp, you want to fall onto the enemy on the right, swing across the trees and land on the statue's head. Then go behind the back of Snake Eyes and execute them. This is a really tough mini boss, and as you have seen, we have not fought anything previously except for the Lone Shadow, so we are really underprepared. But do not worry, the Dead Angle technique will save us. Before the snake eyes recover, use an Echo Sugar and dash to the left. Prepare yourself to start attacking the moment the opportunity comes and start swinging your sword fiercely to trap snake eyes into a corner. Once they are trapped, keep attacking until they use a heavy attack, signaled by this red glowing symbol. Once this occurs, lock on and deflect immediately. After a short amount of time, this dangerous foe will have perished and you will be able to continue. Once you arrive to the Mist Noble House, go to the nearest corner and double jump to get in top of this branch. Once you've done it, just double jump again to reach the roof and enter the gap running to quickly fall onto the Noble and execute him. Simple as that. The Corrupted Monk Quick Quill requires some items that you should have gathered along the way. Right before entering the arena, keep the Homeward Idol, the Snap Seeds and the Fistful of Ash. Once you have everything set, go across the left wall of the arena until you reach this group of lanterns. Then go towards the boss, staying on their left side, and use first your snap seeds and then the fist full of ashes. While doing so, position yourself between the corrupted monk and the stone pillar right beside where the idol is going to be. After using all the fist full of ashes, dash back, jump onto the stone pillar, and then double jump towards the boss to execute it. If you haven't been detected, you can actually fail this jump and try again, because the Corrupted Monk will not spot you. I recommend doing so in case you miss, because if you use the items and then you respawn, you will not be able to gather them again. So be careful about that. Okay, let's go for the coolest trick in the game, the famous Air Swing. From the Ashin Castle Gate, Precisely delay jump onto this wall in the tiny gap with no hitbox. Run through the inside of the wall and drop onto the pound out of bounds. Dive and then carefully swim around death boxes until you reach this tree. You are seeing the route on the screen, so just feel free to follow it. Come out of it to the surface and congrats! You are now floating in the air and able to get to Genichiro in a matter of seconds. And speaking of Genichiro, to defeat this dangerous foe, as soon as the fight begins run across the arena and trap him between the door and the samurai armor and slash him with the divine confetti on your blade. I find that deflecting and swinging right after it is the best method to keep him trapped. As you can see, we are also using the dead angle technique to defeat him. For the last phase, use Yashariku's sugar as soon as you can and face back to dodge his first thrust. Then start attacking him. Return his electric slash and just deflect and dodge until victory is yours. Repeat the same method to activate the first air swim and, once you're in the pond, descend a little bit to go through these rocks. Once you've done it, head towards this building and keep swimming until you reach the idol. Wait for the zone to load, then keep going forward on the left of this black wall and reach these rocks. Before going past them, as there is a dead box, do not do it. First, go up, get out of the water and dive again. The next zone will load, go through these two rocks, 
and then to the box that is on the left. Once you reach the Senpu elevator, just quit the game, enter back once again, and just start swimming up until you see this tree. Go swimming above this tree until you reach Senpu Temple. Easy as that. From here you can swim to a pond and then recover your normal properties to reach the idol of Senpu Temple. And uh, you can also do a complex setup to do the ape skip, which is the hardest skip in the game in my opinion. But this is really complicated, has a ton of setups, has a, a ton of subtle routing, there's a lot of dead boxes, it is really precise. And so I think that you should watch a detailed video on that, so I'll link some of them in the description. What I can tell you though, it's the monkey skip. Continuing our path in Senpu Temple, reach the roof of this building and grapple hook onto this branch. Align Wolf with this dark spot over here on the rock wall and then perform a delayed jump. After it, wall jump to reach the roof in front of you. This is easier said than done, however. The delayed jump is already hard enough, but the wall jump needs to be performed slightly delayed. So this is a really, really precise trick, as you have to land two top jumps in a row. Once on the roof, just dash in this direction and jump out of bounds to reach the Divine Channel. And those are some of the tricks and skips speedrunners use. We've covered the Shura route, which is the fastest one, but there is also an air swim that leads you to the Fountainhead Palace and a couple more interesting things. I'll link those in the description as well. Thank you so so much for watching the video. As always, subscribe to Walrush for more content, like the video and comment us your thoughts. This has been the speedrunner technique for Sakiro. Shadows die twice. Until we meet again!